Hey everyone, it's LaDon. I wanted to come on really quickly to share with you guys a little bit more information about my Funding Friday post. Now in my last Funding Friday post, I talked about using capacity building grants to offset a percentage of your salary as a nonprofit executive director. And I should also add that you can use that funding to fund salaries or a portion of a salary for uh, individuals who work for your organizations as well. So I provided a list of the various types of activities most capacity funding covers, but you know it, it's not limited to those activities I listed. You know, as you look through the capacity building funds, you'll receive more specific information about the types of activities they will cover. Okay. So the reason I'm doing this follow-up video is because Kim Thomas herself asked a really great question, which was, you know, LaDon, I need, you know, a little more direction. Tell me, where can I look for this funding? So I was very hesitant to say, you know, go to this website and apply for this grant or that grant, because you can't really be that specific when it comes to applying for capacity building grants, because they um, are the same as other grants. Um, in the sense that not only you know do not only do they provide you know funding for your program or for capacity building, but there are a number of different touchstones in in um, areas of specifications you must meet as a nonprofit organization to be competitive for that grant. So I didn't want to say go to this site and apply for this grant or there's this capacity grant or that capacity grant or this one because the grants that you will apply for will be specific to your work. So one grant is not going to work for everyone. Okay, so it's really important as I said in my response to Kim that as nonprofit executive directors we do our homework and you know we begin the process if you have not already of really researching who the funders are in your area of specification. Um, the reason for that is, you know, those are the pool of um, funding opportunities you want to apply for. You don't want to apply for grants that don't fall within your specifications or, you know, where the uh, grant, the grantor has you know, items they feel are really important to this grant making process that you have no expertise in, you don't have a proven track record, and your programming does not address. Because when you apply for those grants, you create a negative impression in the mind of the funder because they feel as though you've not done, done your due diligence, if that makes sense. So it's really important you know, as a leader to do that research, determine who those funders are within you know, your realm of expertise, and then you know begin to drill down kind of from there. Um, one of the areas you'll want to look at are co corporate funders. So you know look at the corporations you know operating nationally, and then also those corporations operating within your community. Go to their website. Most of those websites will have a tab that says community giving, and they will list a variety of different grants they have, the deadlines for those grants, what the specifications are. Um, and typically who the uh, community relations person is. You want to know who that community relations person is and you want to begin to build a relationship with that person so they're aware of who you are. And when you apply for a grant, you know, they have some frame of reference, right? Um, you may not be able to apply, there may not be, you know, grants available currently that are in alignment with your work. Don't apply for them, but begin that relationship building process with them um, so that, again, when those opportunities become available, you, your request is not kind of coming out of the blue. They have some frame of reference for who you are. Another area you really want to look at is your local government. You want to look um, on your state level, you want to look on your city level, and you want to look, you know, if you're in a township or county, you want to look on those levels as well. Because there will be governmental bodies that provide grants, you want to know what those are, what their deadlines are, and apply for those. Um, and you want to know if there are um, businesses that provide grants within 
or, or provide grants to organizations doing work within specific neighborhoods. That happens a lot in large urban communities like Chicago. You'll have organizations who fund work, uh, you know, for uh, women or for youth or, um, you know, workforce development or education or, you know, homelessness within a specific community that they've identified um, that faces significant barriers to success. So you want to know if you're residing in any of those communities. And if there are funders, again, you want to know who they are so you can be begin to build that relationship. You can know what funding opportunities are available. And you can begin to apply for them. Um, it's really important, and I'm probably beating this um, you know, like it's a dead horse. But it's really, really important that you read those specifications um, around what a um, the giving body's expectation is, what their mission is um, in terms of how they want to utilize their funds and what specific areas they have identified are um, in alignment with their mission or their giving mission uh, nationally or within your community. And again, do not apply if you do not meet those specifications. You know, it's almost like you know, going to apply, you're a welder and, you know, you have an expertise in, in welding, but applying for a job as a um, maitre d', <laughs> right? Um, or being a maitre d' with uh, great connections and uh, a really solid uh, work history in terms of successful restaurants uh, and applying for a job as a welder, right? So those skill sets don't align. They are not in alignment. And so in the mind of the employer, they're thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me, right? And, and a perception is created. And so you want to be very thoughtful about creating those um, perspectives of who you are. Now, in terms of looking for these grants, again, you know, you have to do your research. It's just about going on the internet. There are um, databases out there like the um, the foundation center and I know that there are a lot of databases that require um, a subscription and so if you know uh, your resources are tight <laughs> don't feel like you're going to miss out on opportunities for funding because you're unable to subscribe to that you know database again you can do all of this information by doing your research, you know, online yourself. Um, and also, again, looking at organizations similar to yours and, you know, finding out who is funding their work. It gives you an idea of who some of those foundations are or who those, um, you know, family uh, trusts are or who those corporations are so that you can begin the process of creating a plan to apply for their funding. All right, so I hope this information was helpful. Thank you so much, Kim, for asking that great question. And um, I hope you guys are having a great day. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them below. I'm happy to help. All right, talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.